In this video, we're going to be going over the differences between the two main hacks for your PlayStation Classic, AutoBleam versus BleamSync. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so before we get started, I would like to say if you're a new viewer or old, welcome to the channel. I've been thinking about creating a Let's Talk series for my channel for quite a while. The series will be more informational based content. I'll be providing you info about tech and gaming topics, as well as my personal opinions about certain topics. The idea behind the series is to engage with you guys, the viewers. I want to hear from you. If you agree or disagree with me, love or hate the item or topic, pretty much anything. For this video, leave me a comment below telling me if you like the idea of a Let's Talk series. I also want to say if you guys like my content and videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give my video a thumbs up. This helps me and the channel so much, and it is so very much appreciated. Thank you guys for all the support so far. I look forward to continuing to talk to you guys. Now let's just jump into the video topic. AutoBleam versus Bleam Sync. If you're watching this video, you likely know what at least one of these two hacks are. And if you don't, then you're going to learn a lot about them today. I'd like to cover three main areas about these hacks to give you guys a better understanding of what they are and how they are different. These three areas are going to be a brief history of the dev team and how they're structured, features and ease of use, and what each group of developers are planning for the future of their hack. Let's start with BleamSync. BleamSync was created by a modding group called ModMyClassic, based in North America and in the UK. They've been around since hacking began on the Super Nintendo Classic. Mod My Classic was the first group to get the EMMC dump for the PlayStation Classic. A developer by the name of Mad Monkey was digging around with the dump and found the LOL hack exploit that essentially got the ball rolling for both development groups. As many of you know, Pat Hartle, also known as Dr. Dalek, was the lead developer on the project and he has a solid team of support developers working with him. Pat was the first person to load a 21st game on the console. This method was shared with the community, and Just Maku picked it up and created the first automated tool, GPG Hacks. From here, further development came in, and a group of developers came together to begin working on BleamSync. The team consisted of about eight or so core developers and contributors, like Swingflip, Cyanic, Viral underscore DNA, and Andrew, to name a few. Countless beta testers, some Patreon supporters by the way of monthly donations, and content creators like myself. Mod My Classic also has a very large and growing Discord topping almost 10,000 users in just over a year. I'll leave all the resources for both hacks in the description down below, including Discord links. If you've not joined, take the time to do that, it's 100% worth it. I recently found out that Pat will be stepping away from the lead developer position to pursue other goals. When asked about this, Pat said, I would say that BleamSync has outgrown the idea of being run by one person. The guys on team are extremely talented and have a good idea of where the project's going. It might include some pretty substantial changes, but the key features of being built from the ground up with multi-platform in mind is still the top priority. Swingflip and CompCom have stepped into leading positions and are going to head the transitional period that is taking place. Be sure to watch until the end of the video for more information about the changes coming to BleamSync. AutoBleam on the other hand started out and stayed a one-man show for quite some time. Arthur Jacobowitz, and sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, also known as Screamer on GitHub and Discord, is a Polish developer living in Ireland. After the initial GPG hacks, an LOL hack package was found by users Just Maku and Mad Monkey, Screamer decided to take that and begin developing his own version of the PlayStation Classic UI. We have now come to know that as AutoBleam. One of the major things Screamer had in mind while developing AutoBleam was cross-platform support and the ability to do as much without the use of a PC as possible. He wanted all the main work of the hack to happen right on your USB drive directly on the console. When BleamSync was first launched, Screamer was unable to use the game scanner because he was a macOS user. This left him unable to install BleamSync and look to create an all-encompassing hack like BleamSync that was usable by all users regardless of what operating system they were on. AutoBleam used the same file structure that early versions of BleamSync used, and initially it was planned that Screamer's code would be used as a mod to be placed on top of the BleamSync hack. Additionally, he wanted his hack to be able to be used offline and not rely on a computer or cloud service for database building. As time has gone on, he slowly garnered a following, and with that, people willing to volunteer their time to help with the development of software. Currently, there are two main developers as well as a few contributors who help to keep things rolling on the back end. I should mention that neither hacking group does this for profit. 
Although BleemSync may take minor donations, they are used specifically to cover expenses like server costs and web hosting fees. And based off the information I've got, those donations don't cover those expenses. AutoBleem, on the other hand, just does not accept monetary donations at all. AutoBleem has grown substantially over the last few months, and they are rapidly working on cool and new features to bring to you guys. Screamer describes AutoBleem's team as small and simple, like AutoBleem itself. We work more as a community with a joint effort in this case. I do not push anybody to do any job, it is just a project we do for fun. Also, our rule is to listen to people at first and then develop features that are requested the most without over-engineering. Neither group works on set deadlines, and will release updates and newer versions when they feel their builds are stable enough for the public. This is good in my opinion because it ensures that the end users will always end up with a semi-polished product. And trust me, after playing around with some of the beta builds myself, you guys would not be happy if they released incomplete builds. Now let's talk about some of the features. BleemSync is at a current beta release of 1.0.1, and with their latest releases we got a lot of really awesome features. The introduction to the boot menu, which allowed us to access either the BleemSync hack or the RetroArch software. The RetroArch integration was amazing. This allowed us to play other retro games like NES, Super Nintendo, Sega, and Game Boy to name a few. On top of this, we got a very unique website that allows you to manage your games via a web interface. This web interface allowed you to do things like load your games one at a time to your PlayStation Classic via a USB cable, swap cover art of any game with an easy drag and drop option, the ability to reorganize in what order your games will be displayed, disable the PlayStation boot sequence at the start of each power cycle, and even allow you to bypass the boot menu altogether and boot directly into either BleemSync or RetroArch depending on how you were wanting your PlayStation Classic hack to look. One thing that some were not so happy about was the fact that the BleemSync 1.0 hack required you to load a very small script directly to your PlayStation Classic hardware. This is something that can be reversed, but many did not feel comfortable altering the internal memory of their consoles. There's a lot of misunderstandings about this. The reason BleemSync implemented this was for various reasons. These include pretty crucial things like allow for recovery, diagnosing system errors, or corruption due to brownouts, and even allow for NTFS and XFAT support. AutoBleem, on the other hand, has made it very clear that they have no intention of ever altering the internal memory of your PlayStation Classic. In their most recent beta build of 0.6, we have many of the same features that you have with BleemSync, but not all of them. You do have some different features though, and that was nice to see. These include things like pre-installed database artwork, so you can just dump your PlayStation games onto the USB drive into the correct folder in one shot. You have a completely new user interface that ditched the PlayStation Classic carousel style front end. We now have multi-language support for international use. They added a game manager feature, which allows you to edit game information like the name, if that's something that you wanted to do. The game manager also displays how much free space is left on your USB drive. This may sound like a small feature, but it's one of those things that really shows you how much thought went into this build. Both hacks support BinQ as well as PvP files for your PlayStation Classic games. They also both support custom themes, which is a really cool feature. This allows us to really personalize our gaming experience to make this console much cooler to use and show off. BleemSync and AutoBleem are both running incredibly well, and I have to say the developers on both sides are doing an amazing job. Now let's move on to the third point, the future of each hack. As I mentioned earlier, the largest change to BleemSync will take place in the way of the development team. Dr. Dalek will be stepping away from the project and leaving it in the hands of some of the other developers. And although I personally am a huge fan of the work that Dr. Dalek put in, I respect his decision. I've seen some of the other things he's working on and they're absolutely incredible, and I'll hopefully be able to cover some of them on my channel in the future. Needless to say, BleemSync has a lot going on behind the scenes. Future releases of the hack are being taken in a new direction. They're working on a hybrid solution for both on and off console, which include things like a rewritten and substantially smaller payload, proper Q file allocation, additional format support for ISO and image files in addition to the already supported bin and PBP files, drag and drop game transfers will replace the current single game loading procedure for BleemSync 1.0, as well as using an on console app. Customizable presets with the carousel and even folder support is under works. Third party controller support has been mentioned there too. RetroArch is also going to have a major facelift too, which will improve stability and core playability for almost all cores, including exclusive ports for emulators like Drastic for Nintendo DS. One of the major features coming to the PlayStation console though, 
is OTG support. This is another one of those things that would not have been possible without the payload scripts that are being loaded onto your console itself. For those who aren't familiar with what OTG support is, it's the ability to connect your USB drive through an adapter that plugs into the power port of your PlayStation Classic. The obvious benefits of this would be removing the limited power output from the front USB ports, which will allow for far better USB compatibility, speed, and playability. Additionally, you're freeing up the second USB port on the console for multiplayer without the use of a USB hub. Alongside this, Wi-Fi support will be added. All of this is really exciting. AutoBleam has a ton of things coming out of the woodwork for future builds as well. I should mention the team at AutoBleam does not do much in the way of RetroArch, but any version of RetroArch that is compatible with BleamSync should also run the exact same on AutoBleam. Screamer did mention that having RetroArch integrated in upcoming releases is planned, however he wants to wait for a stable build. Third-party controller support is at the top of the list for AutoBleam going into the next set of releases. They would like to get analog support in their new Evolution UI build to allow for better gameplay experiences. Having the best user experience is what the team at AutoBleam is really looking to create. Plans to implement the small things like marking favorite games, more options in game configurations like clock rates and GPU plugins prove this. They're even planning to look at incompatible games and develop workarounds to get them playable on the console. They're constantly looking for feedback from users and taking comments and suggestions very seriously. All in all, they have some pretty big things coming soon too. I've been asked literally over a hundred times, hey Rostalgia, what's better, BleemSync or AutoBleam? And honestly, I don't actually think one is better than the other. They're both very different. They're both amazing and flawed at the same time. I personally have a build for each. They both have an incredibly dedicated development team and really active community support. Both teams ultimately want to give you the best experience. I sometimes wonder if the development teams on both groups decided to work together to make a super hack, what that would look like. Is it a possibility that they would consider it? Well, apparently yes. Although there have been some rumors that BleemSync and AutoBleam are not getting along on the back end, and although they may not always agree, they do seem to be considering a small partnership for the betterment of the community. I've reached out to the lead developers of each group to make sure that this information is true, and it is confirmed that ModMy Classic developers have been in talks with the AutoBleam team, and they're planning to work together to create a fully loaded RetroArch with all the proper PlayStation Classic cores that will work on both hacks. This is currently in development, and it is a huge step forward in light of some of the news that we've been hearing. This essentially means that both groups are going to work together to improve the RetroArch build and bring to us, the community, the absolute best product they can. In terms of the front end of the PlayStation Classic hack, ultimately you should use what you feel most comfortable with. I say use both, load up two different USB sticks and play around with both builds. If you like one better, stick with it. I'll continue to put content out teaching you guys how to do new things with these builds as updates and new versions come out, and you can count on me to walk you through getting set up. Thanks for watching my first Let's Talk series video. Be sure to tell me if you liked it or not in the comment section below. Let me know if there's another topic you want to hear about, and make sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and turn on notifications. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.